well, that first hymn, difficult, you know, you wanted to join in and sing and whatever. So hopefully in a couple of weeks we'll all be able to do that all together. Um, but that was good, and it's just a praise, praise the Lord. Um, well, the last time I was up here a couple of weeks ago, um, I mentioned uh, the away day that we had uh, with uh, Ken Benjamin. And he encouraged us to do things differently as a church. And um, the idea being to move mission out of here to out there somewhere. Um, And uh, his idea was that they would meet at the same time, but as you meet out there, whatever your session is, it would have some sort of Christian input. And uh, he shared with us ideas as one group. They'd had cyclists and they went out, but they'd stop and have a study or something like that. Another group was a group of walkers. And as people walked, you'd do like a Bible study or whatever. But he said, that's what works for them. And he's encouraged us to think about what things work for you. Um, If you were at the last church meeting, um, you would have heard um, that Lynn was looking to trial a new venture. It's called Worship in the Woods. As the words imply, it's worship in the woods. So it's not here. Um, So this morning, um, Lynn and uh, Tony and Sarah and hopefully Sam will be in Priory Woods and they've invited um, some other families along and people along. Okay. Um, there's a cat just running backwards and forwards. So if you wonder what the noise is in the background, there's a little cat having a have a fun upstairs. So yeah, um, where were we? Yeah. So this morning, same time as we're meeting, Lynn um, and those others are, are just trying this new venture of how to worship God differently, different surroundings. It will involve praise, Bible study, time for prayer, activities. Hopefully, all agey. I'm not quite sure whether that we building tents or shelters or something like that, and I'm not sure. But there'll be a chance, and if there's older ones there that are bringing grandchildren, whatever, there's also time just for social interaction, just to talk and whatever. So um, hopefully if they can get a signal down in Priory Wood and we can get a signal here, we're hoping to have a little bit of a link at the end of the service just to say how it's gone and maybe uh, what prayers we can do. So... um, I just thought, as they're meeting there with this new trial venture, we thank God it's a lovely morning so that it would have been awful to be down there in pouring rain or whatever. So shall we pray for them now? Dear Lord, we we come to you this morning, and as we come and worship you here this morning, um, we opened our song with praise the Lord, praise the Lord, and to praise the Lord wherever we are, really. And this morning we particularly pray for Lynn and her group of helpers that are down in Priory Wood this morning, just wanting to worship you, um, but just in a different environment. We pray for those families that have been invited to come along and those that will be joining in. Um, Lord, we just pray that they'll have a great time this morning. We pray for the witness that's out there in the woods. No doubt as they uh, do their activities, there may be dog walkers, people walking by, Um, just wondering what on earth's going on but Lord I pray for those inquisitive people maybe to ask questions maybe to stand maybe they'll hear listen maybe they can hide behind a tree and listen or whatever but just being out in the open we thank you for this venture and we pray for them now that you will be with them as they meet uh, in the woods amen well this morning um, we're continuing our services in this um, series of Catching the Wave. And if you remember, so far, we've thought about family, business, government, and media. I did think about giving you a quiz, but I didn't want to embarrass you all because you'd be saying they're scratching your heads. I can't quite remember what it is. Um, And this morning, um, we're thinking about education. And education is a massive topic. When you think of education, you know, what comes to mind? Primary schools, secondary schools, academies, sixth form colleges, universities, apprenticeships, day release, teachers, lecturers, children, students, teaching assistants, support staff, head teachers. Oh, my goodness, the list could just keep going on and on and on. Well, 
You may know that I work for the University of Cambridge, so I suppose I'm sort of involved in education, um, although my role is quite dull. Um, I work on a help desk in finance division, helping people to use systems and answer queries, so that's not very exciting stuff. Um, but I thought it'd be good to speak to someone that's probably involved a little bit more in education and does actually have interaction with students. Um, and I'll scratch in my head, so um, who to ask? So it's a bit like Susan and Pete. I've got to pretend that I don't know this person. So um, Karen, do you want to pop up? Um, I've got a few questions to ask you this morning. Okay. Okay then. So, um, Karen, um, can you tell us what your job and your role is within the university? Okay. So my job title is the MBA program manager. Um, the MBA is a masters of, uh, masters of business administration, um, and um, I we deal with mature students. These students have got their undergraduate degree they've been out to work for at least three years and then they have given up their jobs and come back to us to earn this degree to then hopefully go on to get better more well-paid jobs um, so it, as a program manager um, I'm responsible for managing the operational side of things um, the administrative side of things um, making sure cats just turned up again <laughs> making sure that um teaching and learning is is carried out correctly um, and I'm part of a team of seven of us um, and I sort of oversee um, most of the work that goes on there. Now I know what she does. Okay that's good. Um, so how would you describe a typical day I was going to say in the office sitting at the dining room table? <laughs> <laughs> There is no such thing as a typical day. Um, I guess on any given day, I'll have at least one meeting. Um, used to be in face-to-face. -face. Now, obviously, it's Zoom or Teams or something like that. Um, depending on the time of year, I could be collating course outlines um, from the lecturers. We have, gosh, over 50 courses that we teach. Um, so that's quite a mammoth task. Um, so with the team, um, I collect the course outlines and then the team divide them up between them. Um, I oversee assessment, so uh, making sure all assessment is fair and equitable. Um, uh, so typically a day I could be getting emails from students saying I'm uh, not well, can I have an extension to a site and assignment that's due this morning and you have to use my judgment. Um, to decide how long to give them. Um, I'll have emails from lecturers to say there was a problem with the lecture, you know, can it be sorted out sort of thing. Um, the team will be, um, contact me either in the office or on Teams if, if, you know, we're not in the office, asking questions about how to do things. Um, goodness me. Yeah, and, and then, yeah, like I say, there are the various meetings that I have to attend. It's all quite boring, really. But. <laughs> so how has the pandemic impacted on your role and also how has it impacted the students? Right, well, obviously, like most office-based staff in the country, we're all now working from home. Although we, in between lockdowns, we had been going into the office one or two days a week, but not the whole team altogether. Um, so yeah, my desk has finished from a very my desk has changed. Sorry, from a very nice setup with two screens, two big screens on my computer, and to a laptop on the dining room table, um, which up until recently was held up by a, pie, a stack of Top Gear magazines. <laughs> Can't think who they came from. <laughs> Happy. Um, so yeah, that's um, the physical aspect has changed, and also. Um, for the students, particularly when we went into the first lockdown in March last year, you know, this, this group of students had started off the course, everything was going along nicely, and they were having the usual Cambridge experience, you know, visiting each other's colleges and all of that, and all of that suddenly stopped, um, and they were told to stay in their rooms or to go home, um, and a lot of them did go home. We have, it's a very international course, so we have students from 
around 40 plus different countries around the world. Um, so, yeah, lots of them went to their own homes. Teaching um, had to continue. That all went online. So the lecturers had to come to grips with this funny thing that they would never used before called Zoom. And, um, you know, this, uh, yeah, the, the, for the students this year, last year and this year, actually, as well, because it's been a funny mixture this year. We started off being able to have some in-person, some online stuff. Then it went all completely online. Then we've opened up again to some in-person, some on online teaching. And it really has had quite a detrimental impact to them. A lot of them um, have suffered, their health has suffered. And we've had at least one who's um, had a really bad dose of COVID and others who had tested positive. Um, and um, I think it, yeah, mentally it's affected them as well. Um, not mentally as in their ability to do the work, although, you know, that has affected some, but mentally as in their state of mind, their psychological well-being, if you like. Um, lots of students this year have, and last year actually, have um, uh, had stress, you know, um, complaining of stress. They've had to have counselling. The university counselling service is overrun with students, um, not just from our course, but from all courses. Um, and we also have our own in-house. Um, she's not a counsellor. She's um, like a motivational speak, a coach sort of thing. So she's been absolutely inundated as well with students asking. So I think it's had a greater impact on the students actually than it has on the staff. You know, we were all working quite nicely from home. It was horrendous at first, you know, having to turn all the face-to-face -face teaching to online teaching. Um, but now we're sort of in the rhythm and although it's still, you know, busy, um, we, we've been coping, uh, I think, a lot better than the students. And we are gradually going back into the office. I'm back in again on Tuesday, so it'd be nice to be seeing real people. Thank you. Um, I know um, you shared in um, the uh, prayer group on a Monday night <coughs> with a couple of uh, students that um, have needed prayer and, and you've been able to interact with them. So um, maybe how can we pray for you and the students? Um, so, yeah, as James mentioned, we've been playing, praying for one or two students. I, I won't mention you by name, obviously. Um, but uh, please, do can, please do pray that they will continue to stay healthy. The one student we had been praying for, I've actually been able to meet up with her and we've, in person. And it was really lovely to, to see that. And um, although she's a Buddhist by faith, or by upbringing, I should say, um, I'd mentioned that we had been praying for, and I'd asked her permission first because, you know, I thought that was in a professional capacity that that was the best thing to do. And she was happy for us. And she said also, um, her college tutor had also been praying for her. So she, you know, that, that really meant a lot to her. And she thanks everybody for, for our prayers. Um, please do continue to pray for her. Um, she went to a, her tutor had invited her to one of the college chapel services when they were able to have them. And she was saying how beautiful it was and how calm and at peace she felt in there. So please do continue to pray for her that, you know, she will find the Lord. Um, just heard a couple of weeks ago, sadly, that um, two students have had bereavement. So please pray for those. One was a father out in India, um, which I think uh, the student obviously, you know, took really quite badly. Um, so he had to go home to India. So please do pray for him and another who's lost um, his grandfather. Um, not only that, but um, as I mentioned earlier, you know, the students, um, a lot of them haven't been coping particularly well. So please, please do pray that they will continue, they will find the help that they need, that they will have the resources to be able to cope. Um, not only is it the academic side of the degree, but they're also, um, whilst they're on the degree, they've given up jobs that which were probably fairly well paid to come to do a degree to get a better paid job. And unfortunately, there are jobs out there, um, but they're, they're all getting quite, those who haven't managed to secure a job are all getting quite anxious that they you know, haven't been able to secure a job. So it'd be really good to pray for peace for them and for pray for jobs for them. Um, 
for myself. Um, to be honest, I'm not too keen to go back to work. Just <laughs> no. Um, yeah, I think to be. We're on holiday next week, which would be lovely because I am really tired. So it'd be great to pray just for resilience for that. Um, and um, yeah, that's all, that's all really. Yeah, just, just for resilience. I guess patience um, and knowing how to, to help the students, how to react to the students. It's not my job. I'm not a counsellor. I'm an administrator. But, you know, if a student comes to me and they've said they've lost their dad or what have you, you know, I want to try and provide some sort of comfort to them. So just please pray that I'll know what to do and what to say. Thank you. Um, maybe um, we could just spend a few moments in prayer. We're going to be praying about education later on after Chris has spoken. But um, maybe one or two of you would just like to pray for Karen uh, um, this morning. So shall we pray? Lord, we just thank you that you've placed Karen where you have in, in that place of work in Cambridge and we just give thanks for her. And we give thanks, Lord, that she is a witness to you in that place. And we ask that you will um, give her boldness and encourage her and inspire her and give her the right words to say, Lord. And when we think particularly about that um, Buddhist student who's there, um, that Karen has come across, you've obviously led and guide, guided Karen um, towards that person. We just pray that through your Holy Spirit, Lord, you will lead and guide Karen and <coughs> soften the um, hearts and minds of that student to be able to hear words that Karen uh, might be able to offer, Lord. Um, the truth of the gospel, the truth of you in gentle and um, appropriate ways. So. We pray about that situation. We pray for students who are um, seeking work opportunities, having worked so hard through their courses and, and um, looking for opportunities at the moment, that you will lead them to places that are the places you want them to be in, Lord, and give them peace of mind as they seek um, for those <coughs> work opportunities. And we pray for Karen, and for other people working there, that you will give them strength, that you will, by your Holy Spirit, sustain them through to the end of term, Lord. Um, and as they return to their workplace, carrying on Tuesday, and the others were not quite sure when, that you will um, lead and guide them in safe ways, but mostly, Lord, that you will lead and guide those Christians there to be witnesses for you. distracting as it was wandering around this distracting morning. me <laughs> <laughs> um we're going to continue now with uh, uh, one further song it's called living hope